Hello, my name is Larry Tentarelli. I'm the president and founder of the Blue Chip Daily Trend Report with a brief educational video today for stockcharts.com. And I'm going to talk about moving averages and how I use them to identify trends and manage risk. So I'm an intermediate to longer term technical trader and I follow price and trends extensively, and I use moving averages as my primary tool. So what we'll talk about in this video is I'll share a few of the moving averages that I use, what I do to identify trends, how I use them to manage risk. And then at the end of the video, we'll take a look at a few interesting settings that I use every day on stockcharts.com that I think can help you manage uh, positions. So we'll start with moving averages. And just to, to keep it uh, simple for those that are, are a little bit newer, moving averages are a derivative of price. So to give you an example, I have on this chart of triple Q, the 50-day moving average, which is the blue line, the 200-day moving average, which is the green line. And the moving averages are just a, an average closing price over a set time period. So for the 50-day moving average, that's going to be the average closing price of this security over the past 50 days. And, and what it does is it starts to form a trend. So we'll talk about first more longer term moving averages, and then we'll move into some shorter term moving averages. And everyone has to experiment and find what works best for them, for their individual time frame and their trading or investing style. But for, for intermediate to longer term trends, the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average are really considered the two benchmarks. And a lot of uh, hedge fund managers, Paul Tudor Jones has spoken quite a bit about the 200-day moving average. And there's a lot of fund managers that really use this 200-day as a primary trend filter. So two things we're going to talk about first to identify trends. So the moving averages, whenever I see these moving averages sloping higher, and that's the case for the triple Q chart from May of 2020 until we'll call it just the end of 2021. Whenever the moving averages are sloping higher and they're stacked on top of each other, then that's going to help me identify a primary uptrend. So in this case, we can see prices trending higher. The 50-day moving average is rising. The 200-day moving average is rising. And the 50-day is stacked over the top of the 200-day. So this is a classic primary uptrend. Rising 50-day, rising 200-day, they're on top of each other. Now, if we want to start to talk about trends, we can see a, a couple of weak spots that showed up on the chart. So if we go with rising and on top of each other as an uptrend, then what we can see here is, is a couple of weak signals. So number one, when the 50-day moving average started to roll over here, it rolled over pretty sharply. So when we see the slope going from mostly higher for this almost two-year period to it start to roll over sharply, that's the first sign of some trend weakness. Number two is price above the moving average is a key signal. So in the case of the 200-day, and this is really considered the, the key long-term trend indicator. So in the case of the 200-day, once price went through this 200-day moving average for the first time in a year and a half, this was warning signal number two. Now, this can often be used for those that want to incorporate moving averages these signals can be used uh, on the close or intraday, but there are some very basic trend following programs that will buy on a close above a specific moving average. In this case, we can use the 200-day, and then they'll sell and or go short on the close below the same moving average. Now, some systems will use 
two closes. They want to see a back-to-back -back close to confirm the signal. Some, some uh, signal systems will use the weekly moving average. So as far as if it's one close or two close or a daily moving average or weekly moving average, that's something that each trader and investor should uh, work out on their own time frame. But to keep it simple for the purposes here, we'll stay with the daily. So another weak signal or another sell signal was this cross below the 50 crossing the 200 day to the downside. And then the last thing we see was the 200 day moving average, the slope actually starting to roll over. So when I was doing my back testing and my experimenting, and I've been using moving averages for 20 years now, but the, the key basics that I look for is what is the overall trend? How are the moving averages positioned against each other? And where is the price versus the moving average? So we can see here, 50 day rolled over, the price crossed below the 200 day, the 50-day cross to the downside, and then the 200-day moving average rolled over. So basically four sell signals could, could show up here over the course of about a three-month period. And then to keep it simple, if we just want to stay with very long-term, as long as the price stays below the green line, then for longer-term timeframes, that would be either a sell signal or a do not buy signal. So this is longer term trends uh, identifying risks. So we'll go to chart number two. Bear with me just for a second. I had this set up and then we, okay. So chart number two is going to be the same concept, but I'm going to dial it back one to keep it even simpler and longer term. And then we'll move into shorter term because everyone has a different time frame. So the a very, very basic system and one that I started with is just using the 200-day moving average. Now, this can be very choppy, but it can also be a, a very long-term time frame. So we've got the energy sector ETF XLE. And we can see by looking at the chart, we'll go back to 2020. Price closed over the 200-day moving average. So I did start a position in the energy sector back in 2020. Uh, it was actually in the XOP ETF, which is similar. But I started it just with the close over the 200-day moving average. And then we can see if we only use the green line, price closed above it. So that was the first key signal. Now, as people do experimenting and backtesting, some will look at the slope of the moving average and they won't take a, a, a long signal if the moving average is declining. Some do that. Not all people do. Some will use the slope. Some won't use the slope. But the buy signal would be the close over the 200 day. And then now there can be a lot of volatility along the way. But the key thing is if we're using that green line as the sell signal, then there would be a buy signal here about 33, 34. It would stay long. And then the position would get closed out here in August at about 42. Another buy signal looks like it held there. And then this held the green line all the way up to 65, break below here, break below here. So there can obviously be some, some back and fill there can be some volatility. We've been in a very volatile market. But when I look at this XLE chart as a longer term position trader, the trend to me is still up in this chart. So even though there's volatility recently from 93 to 81, if we're just talking about the trend and we're just using the long term moving average, then technically, as long as the security stays over this rising green line, then the longer term uptrend is intact. There can obviously be some chop and volatility and back and fill and, and people might get reversed out and then have to buy back in here. But if we're just using the green line to identify the trend, then as I look at this XLE chart, this isn't a longer term uptrend right now. Now, at any time it could roll over, it could break below, and then the trend status would change. But just by using that 200 day, it, it shows a clear example of how we could use that to manage longer term trends and longer term positions. Now, what we'll do is we're going to move just to the opposite to shorter term. 
And as I said, everyone has a different time frame. These are just examples. This is more of a general educational video. Uh, so these are just examples, but everyone, as I said, needs to do their own back testing, find what works for them. But now we're going to move to very short term. So in this case, I've got the eight day and the 20 day moving average. And I've seen some debates online. Some people use the 10 day or some people use the 21 day. And really at the, at the end of the equation, there's not too, too much difference, whether it's the 20 day or the 21 day. Now I will say, and I, I forgot to include this in the beginning, there are SMAs, which are simple moving averages. And then there are EMAs, which are exponential moving averages. So the difference is the simple moving average uh, assigns the same weight. So if we use a 20 day moving average, it says that the close to yesterday is equivalent in importance to the close 20 days ago, 10 days ago, 15 days ago. For EMAs, it gives more relevance to the more recent closes. So I use SMAs because I'm a longer term position trader. I'm not day trading, uh, anything like that. So EMAs are much better for shorter term trading is what I found. SMA is better for longer term trend trading, things like that. EMAs can give signals quicker, but they can also give more false signals that get stopped out. So as I did my testing, I landed on SMAs and that works for me. But at the end of time, they, they tend to, for a longer time frames, balance out pretty much the same. So in this case, we're just gonna use the eight day and the 20 day. As I said, some people might use a five day or a 10 day or a 21 day, and, and that's up to what everyone does for their time frame. But in this case, we're just looking at a very simple moving average cross. So the way that this works, similar to the 50 and 200 day, but it's very simple. So when the blue line, which is the shorter term moving average, crosses the red line, then some traders will use this as a buy signal. And then when they cross back down, that can be used as a sell signal. Now, as with any trading program whatsoever, nothing has a 100% win rate. What the objective is when using trading programs or trading signals is it, it's ideal to have a higher win rate than a fail rate, but it's more important to look at how much money is made on the winning trades versus how much money is lost on the losing trades. So even traders that have less than a 50% win rate can often be extremely profitable if they have much bigger winners than losers over time. So in this case, we can see there could be a lot of false signals. So if we, if we just used and I'm going to talk about long only right now, not long and short. But if we just use the signals of when it crossed down, so in this case, the system would sell SPY maybe about 462 or so. It would take a buy signal at about maybe 443. That would get stopped out quickly, but then it would avoid it. And then it would put in another buy. It looks like maybe at about 430. We can see it would get closed out here, but then by closing out this trade, it would avoid all of this drawdown until uh, looks like maybe 400 or so on the chart got stopped out again. Now, keep in mind, this is a, a bear market and it's a longer term downtrend. So if I, if I put up a chart on the screen that's in a longer term uptrend, like say energy uh, or healthcare, something like that, it probably wouldn't have as many of these false signals. But in this case, now it would generate a buy signal about 380, it looks like. And then that would catch this entire move. It would get closed out here. It would miss this entire move. And then it would get long again here and then recently get closed out. So if we, if we talk about bigger winners versus smaller losers in this case, and I'm just using the S&P 500, but in this case, it looks like a buy signal maybe at 380, and then the sell signal would come in at about 410 or so. So a nice maybe a 10% move, something along those lines. But then it would avoid this entire drawdown, 
get long again somewhere in here. We'll call that maybe 365 to 370. And then it would close that position out at 390. So another decent move. And then it would avoid this drawdown so far. Now, the key thing to understand, because when we look at this chart, it looks simple. We, you know, we get to the we get the big moves and we avoid the big moves down. But then as, as you take a look underneath the surface, it's not always that simple. There can be a lot of, of stop and start along the way. There can be a lot of false signals. So in this case, it would generate a buy signal here and then it would generate a sell signal maybe a week later. And that would be a loss. It would generate a buy signal here. And then maybe a, a little bit of a gain on the sell signal. This would be a buy signal and then obviously a, a big drawdown. So it's we can take a look at the big moves and say, you know, that's great. It looks like it would work all the time, but it doesn't. And, and just like with any trading program, we have to realize that there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of false signals, a lot of positions that get stopped out. But then when the big trades come along, it's designed to offset all the little trades. Now, the key thing, and this is for shorter term, but to, to really make a trading program work for someone that's especially moving shorter term, it's important to take all the signals because if someone decided that they didn't want to take this signal because the market had come down too much, then there's a big move that's missed. Or if they decide that they don't want to take this sell signal because they think everything is going to go higher. So once again, this is... Uh, basics of moving averages. There's a lot of things that need to be incorporated as far as stop placement, position sizing, things like that. So there's a lot more to a trading program than just what is the buy signal. There, there's the buy signal, the sell signal, the position sizing, taking profit. There's a lot that goes to it. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to keep it focused on moving averages and some very basic signals along the way. And then the last chart that we'll take a look at, and then I'll show you how I use the stock charts platform. And the key thing is you can set these charts. They can be set for any time frame. If somebody wants a, a daily, weekly, or monthly time frame, if they want to go shorter term, longer term, anywhere in the middle. And then the final, the final idea is just a very simple using a moving average uh, to manage a position. So this is a chart of Goldman Sachs. And what I do is I use the 20 day moving average for shorter term. And for me, the 20 day time period is shorter term, but to manage the strength of a shorter term trend. So we'll take a look at Goldman Sachs and someone could have bought it if we use the buy signal the close over the 200-day moving average. So the position gets long into the trade. It starts to go up pretty sharply. And then a trader might say, well, I don't want to, to buy it here and then have to wait until it comes all the way back down to this 200-day moving average to get a reversal signal because then I, I've given back all the gains. So what I'll often do to measure the shorter-term trend and to look for either scaling some partial gains or if I decide to close out an entire position is once this trend starts to move higher, I'll use that 20-day moving average. Now, some traders might use an, an eight-day or a 10-day. Some might use the 50-day. And once again, there's no magic formula. It's just something, it's whatever time frame someone can use consistently that works for their process and for their mindset. But if we just use the 20 day, so if we had a position here and we're looking at the chart and say, you know, Goldman Sachs looks like it's starting to get extended. It just keeps going up. I'm not sure where do I want to close the position or where do I want to take some profits? If, if I wanted to quantify it, we could just use this 20 day and say, um, I'm going to stay with the position as long as it's over the 20 day. And then if I get a break below the 20 day, or a close below the 20 day, I can book some profits, I can sell some of it, I can sell all of it, uh, whatever it is, however somebody wants to manage their position. But the, just this is just an example of using in a very sharp uptrend, a moving average to determine when to either reduce a position or close a position for longer term uptrends 
or a longer term time frames. Some traders will use the 50 day moving average. So that's something that should be experimented with. And then we'll show quickly some settings that I use on stockcharts.com that could that help me quite a bit. So just to keep it simple, I just have the Dow Jones 30. This is a chart setting that I keep or a chart group that I keep. And what I can do, I can sort this any way that I want to. But in this case, if I just want to run a scan and, and use moving averages, and if you go into the columns setting, you can choose these moving averages. So if I want to run a scan and, and say, just show me what stocks in the Dow are over the 200-day moving average, then it, it starts me at Visa and then works all the way up. If I want to do 50-day moving average, 20-day moving average, if I'm looking for shorter term relative strength, and, and we can pull up RSI as well. But if I'm looking for shorter term relative strength and, and I want to talk about stacked moving averages, if we look at the Dow right now, there's one, two, three, four, five, six charts. Boeing, Merck, Caterpillar, P&G, Travelers, and it looks like Coca-Cola. I've got six charts that are over the 20-day, over the 50-day, and over the 200-day moving average. So if I'm looking for the strongest charts right now, and that's where I want to focus, strongest charts in the Dow, then I can use relative strength, but I can also look at the, if, if I'm only going to take charts that are over all three moving averages, then right now it's going to give me a choice of six. If I decided that I wanted to go with charts that are only over the 50-day and the 200-day, then I can sort this by the 50-day. It takes me down to McDonald's, and then I can just go through and rule out this chart, this chart, and this chart, and then that gives me a group that I can sort through. So there's a couple of ways that we can do it, uh, that we can use these tools, but this is one of the easiest for me, and I can apply this to any group. If I just want to look at energy stocks, or healthcare stocks, uh, commodity stocks, Chinese, whatever it is, I've got my, my group, I can sort it by moving average, and that often helps me find trades to, to dig further into. So that's it for the video. I hope that you uh, enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something with it. Once again, my name is Larry Tentarelli. You can find me at bluechipdaily.com, and we have a lot more technical insights there. Thank you for your time. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.